This is the Get Your Ass to Work podcast, episode number 23. Victorious warriors win first, then go to war. While defeated warriors go to war first, and then seek to win. Moments with Puzz, brought to you by Get Your Ass to Work, something that everyone can enjoy. Now on to the show. People, what we're talking about here today is preparation. And in that quote from The Art of War, it's all about winning before you ever step onto the battlefield. Why are we bringing this up today? We're bringing this up because it's that time of year when everybody's going to set some fucking goals. They're going to reach out for these achievements that they're going to hit because it's the new year coming up. They're going to set their business goals, their family goals, their financial goals, their weight loss goals and fitness goals. And then they're going to fucking lose. What they're going to do is they're going to go to war first and then seek to win. Now look, there's nothing wrong with just jumping in to get started, but you're at a huge disadvantage. And that's what that quote was about, and this is what I see people do at the beginning of each fucking year. They're going to set these goals, and they're going to say something like, I'm going to lose weight this year. And then they start day one, and then by week one, they have already quit. Why is that? Why? I'm sure everybody knows why. But why do we keep allowing it to happen? So today we're going to cover some talking points, some strategies, some pitfalls, some things that you can do to make sure you win this year. Because at the heart of this podcast, it's really about you guys winning and you guys achieving what you want to get done this year, this month, today, tomorrow, your life. And it starts with having a clear vision of what you want to do. So many fucking people don't even have a vision of of what they actually want to accomplish for the year. Or they have an idea, but it's extremely fucking vague. So let's get to point number one. One of the biggest pitfalls that everyone has when they go out to set their goal is that they have no clear vision of outcome. They set something so vague, such as, I'm going to lose weight. Yeah, you know, my knees really fucking hurt. I want to live longer. I can't play with my kids. I'm going to lose weight. This is the year I'm going to do it. Here's another one. I'm going to pay off all my debt. I'm in debt over my eyeballs. I've got student loans, credit cards, a house payment. I've got, I've got, I've got that Macy's card that I opened for Christmas gifts that I forgot about. And I charged $2,000 to it. And I got to pay that off. I'm going to pay off all my debt or I'm going to save money. I'm going to save money this year. Every single month, I'm going to put money into my bank account for retirement. You've all heard this shit. It happens every year. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. Everybody is fucking guilty of setting some fucking goals or making some New Year's resolutions and not following through. Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we even set them if we have no intentions of actually hitting those goals? Now, some of us do. So let's talk about those of us who do, who are successful and what they do to make sure that they're not putting some shit out there. They're not spouting out the side of their neck because they've had too much champagne on December 31st, talking some shit, and then it never gets done. Let's talk about the people who wake up 
January 1st, not hungover. Okay, maybe a little hungover, but get to fucking work the next day. Let's talk about those people. This is the Get Your Ass to Work podcast, episode number 23. Victorious warriors win first, then go to war. While defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. That's a quote from The Art of War. And obviously what we're talking about here is preparation. People who are going to win are going to prepare They are going to win the war before they even step on the battlefield. Whereas people who were destined to lose likely didn't prepare before they went and stepped foot out onto the battlefield and got slaughtered. Why are we bringing this up today? Because it is a time of year when everybody you know is about to set a goal. They're about to set some sort of resolution, things they're going to do, things they are going to stop doing. These things include, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to pay off my debt. I'm going to get a new car. I'm going to get a promotion. I'm going to change jobs. I'm going to go back to school. This is the time of the year for New Year's when everybody is going to spat out the side of their neck, something that they're going to do or stop doing. And very few people are ever going to accomplish what they set out to do. And there's a reason why this happens. We're going to talk about those reasons today because I want you guys to be successful. I want you guys to set a goal and go out there and fucking crush it and win. There's enough people out in the world already who are going to set goals that have no fucking intention of ever putting in one day of work, one minute of work, or even starting the preparation of what it's going to take to achieve that goal. We're going to cover today a few points, five points that I think are the most important to your goal setting and to you winning. Let's just jump into point number one. Most people, when they set a goal, have no clear vision of their outcome. They're very vague. Well, I'm going to lose weight. Okay, that's great. How much fucking weight are you going to lose? I'm going to save money. How much money a month does that mean you are going to save? Does that mean you're going to save money or you're going to spend less? Get clarity. Be fucking specific. Be ultra clear about whatever it is that you're going to do. I'm going to go back to school. Which school are you going to go back to? Which classes are you going to take? Which degree are you going to go after? How many years are you going to give yourself? Which brings us to point number two. You need to have a timeline. Guys, you have to have a timeline of when Whatever goal you choose to do or something you are choosing to stop doing is going to happen. Are you going to quit smoking? Fucking when? When is that going to happen? When is the day that you are going to light your last cigarette? When is going to be your first day of not having a cigarette? When's it going to happen that you are going to lose weight? How many months are you going to give yourself to lose 25 pounds? Is it two months? Is it three months? Is it six months? How many years are you going to give yourself to go back to school? Are you going to start school January 1st? Or are you going to check schools out and start in the summertime or the fall semester? Be specific. Pinpoint exactly when you are going to hit this goal. Same for real estate. I'm going to work more this year and spend less time procrastinating. Okay, what the fuck does that mean? I'm going to work more. What is it exactly that you're going to do? I'm going to sell more houses. How many fucking houses are you going to sell? How many buyers are you going to work with to help them buy a home? How many sellers are you going to work with? How many is that per month? How many listings do you need to take per week? How many phone calls do you need to make per day in order to take that listing per week? And how many is that per hour? How many calls do you need to make each day? How many appointments do you need to set? Do you guys start to get the feeling that you have to have a fucking plan? Absolutely you do. Because that comes to the next point, which is preparation. And that's why I made the quote, victorious warriors win first, then go to war while defeated warriors Go to war first and then seek to win. 
Do you think, have you, have you guys ever seen the um, fitness competitors, the, the bodybuilders? Do you think that if you ask them, hey, what's your diet like? You think they say, oh, it's pretty good. No, they don't say that shit. That's what most people say who are doing some area of fitness or maybe somewhat fit, do some exercise on the weekends. Maybe they go ride a bike or they do yoga and they look good. And somebody asks, oh, how's your diet? And they're like, oh, it's pretty good. You know, I eat, you know, some broccoli and some fucking kale, whatever. Right now, the professional, you, you know, the person who's out there winning, the person who is taking things to the next level. They'll tell you exactly what they had to eat that fucking day. And I'm not talking about weekend warriors. I'm talking about the fucking professional. They will tell you exactly what they had to eat that day. And they have it written down ounce per ounce of how much chicken they fucking ate, how many eggs, how much protein, how many carbs, how much fat. They could probably even tell you at what hour they ate that meal. And then in that way, they know exactly where they're at. They know exactly where they're going. Remember, they have clarity. Remember, they have a timeline. How much weight do they need to lose before their next contest? Well, they have 12 weeks. Well, that means that they need to lose about four pounds a week, whatever their goal is. But it's specific, and they can tell you exactly what they are doing. It's not general. It's not, oh, I just did a little bit of this. I did a little bit of that, and I got this outcome. That works for a lot of shit, but we're talking about Achieving something a little bit more than just the average results. So you have to prepare. You have to be ready. You have to know exactly what it is you're going after. You have to know when it is you're going to get there. Then you have to have a fucking game plan. And that comes in the preparation. And that is why... The war is won before the soldiers ever hit the battlefield because that general was fucking prepared. He knew his enemy. He had his strategies. He had the gear lined up. He knew what the weather was going to be like. He knew what the terrain was. He has already mapped out the mistakes his enemies could make. He mapped out what his enemies could do right. And so many of us go into our goals for the next fucking year and we set these general goals and we, we just kind of, you know, oh, you know, I'm going to wing it and, you know, I'm just going to eat, you know, this fucking rice bowl today and I'm going to reduce some calories here. And then you don't get a fucking result and you have no idea where to start because you have no fucking clue where you were, where you're at now, and you don't even know where the fuck you're going. How the fuck do you ever expect to hit your fucking goal? And if you do... It's, it's, it's a fucking miracle, number one. And number two, had you been prepared, you probably would have hit that goal in half the amount of fucking time. So get prepared. And, and what does that mean? That means doing some research, doing some studying, and following a path that others have taken before you who have also been successful. You know, one of the great things about life is almost anything, Almost anything you want to achieve, someone else has fucking done it or has done something similar to it. So there's absolutely no reason for you to not be prepared going into the new year with a vague goal, with no timeline, no clear vision of where you're going to end up and not being prepared. Absolutely no fucking reason. Somebody has already done what you're trying to do. Go find that fucking person. We have this wonderful fucking tool. It's called the internet. Shit didn't exist 25, 30 years ago. You couldn't just look up on the internet how to lose weight. Now, you know, here's a pitfall. There's a little too much information out there on how to lose weight. And people can overstudy. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But we've never had it easier in finding the resources, connecting with people, and getting in touch with those who've been on the path, who have achieved what you want to achieve, find those fucking people. Latch on to them. Does that make you uncomfortable? Does it make you uncomfortable to go to someone and ask them for help when you have no fucking clue who they are and they don't know who you are? I've done it. And the reason why it was so easy for me to do it, an extreme introvert like myself who really, 
was very, very uncomfortable talking to people. The one reason why it was so easy for me to go to total strangers who are really successful and ask them for help was because I was fucking serious and I knew I was going to do whatever they told me to do. So find those people who have already done what you want to achieve. They've already have obtained a level of success that you want to obtain or people who have helped many, many other people obtain a level of success that you want to achieve and go ask them for help. And you might have to ask more than once. You might have to go find some information on the internet. You may have to watch videos on YouTube. There is so much fucking information out there. Do your homework, prepare, and find out exactly what someone else did, exactly what they did to achieve what, whatever it was that they got, whatever it is that you want to do, and follow in those fucking footsteps. So what I'm going to bring up next is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I made in real estate that I fixed, by the way, and that is not having a coach. So we'll put it this way. NFL football teams, on average, have 17 coaches on a team of, what, 52 people? On average, 17. Some teams have 24 coaches. Now, why is that? Why is it that the best golfer in the world The number one golfer has coaches. Michael Phelps coached. Piano players coached. Any professional is coaching. This is why you see so many ads on Instagram and Facebook for life coaching and business coaching and all this other shit. A lot of it is crap. I'm going to, I'm going to throw it out there. We've all seen ads for these, you know, fake ass business coaches who've never actually succeeded in business. They're going to be out there trying to coach you. Don't fall prey to the, to the gimmicks. Don't fall prey to the people who are, you know, lose 20 pounds in three hours. Okay. It's all bullshit. Typically, this is just generally speaking, I'm throwing it out there a little loose It's going to be the person who's telling you to do some things that you probably don't want to do. And I'm not talking morally or illegal, you know, ethically wrong. I'm I'm talking about work. If they're, if they're promoting hard fucking work, it's probably the right person. If NFL teams, if Tiger Woods, the best athletes in the world, the best businessmen in the world all have coaches and all coach other people. What makes you think that you're so much fucking smarter than the rest of them that you don't need a coach to help you with your goals? Not only does a coach provide the compass for you, okay, you're going to do all this preparation. You know when you're, where you're going. You know, you know the timeline to which you're going to get there. You're fucking crystal clear. Your coach is going to be a compass. And when you start to get off track a little bit, they're going to bring you back. But what they're also going to do is make sure you don't start going backwards or standing still at all. They're going to keep you on track. They're going to push you forward and make sure you're fucking accountable to doing the work that you've set out to do. Now, if you can find this person, the coach or mentor that's willing to do it for free, great. I always suggest paying somebody, paying a coach because... I'll tell you one thing. I don't like to lose money. I don't like to spend money and and not get value back out of it. And it pisses me off and it hurts when I spend some money on a new program, when I spend some money on a new item, when I spend some money and I don't get the value out of it. So my suggestion is to fucking pay for it because then you're then you're out money also. Now that might not even be a big enough motivator. I mean, how many people have spent money on whatever programs that, you know, a new business program, a weight loss program, a quit smoking program, and just didn't follow through with it. The one thing about those programs that's different than a coach is the program doesn't call you up and say, Hey, fat ass, go get on that treadmill. You need to lose 20 pounds this month. Your coach will, they will call you and they will keep you accountable if they're good. 
And if they're good, those are the ones you want. Now, if your coach doesn't give a shit whether or not you hit your goals and they just are there to be your friend, maybe the wrong person. Point number five, keeping the wrong crowd around you. Now, this one's fucking huge because if you set a goal, that is huge. Let's say you're going after something big or you're making a big change in your life. I am quitting alcohol. Huge, right? That is a huge lifestyle change. I am going to make a million dollars in business this year. Let's say you're hitting some big goals. You are going to have people that are going to tell you to set something realistic. Maybe not quit drinking altogether. Just have a few beers with us when we want. People around you are going to get extremely selfish about you and what you do with your time because they want you to do what they want you to do. So why I'm bringing this up is because you're going to have friends and family members. It could even be your husband or wife that is going to try to talk you out of some of these goals or even fucking worse, even worse, when you're not hitting your goal, they're going to help you justify why it's okay that you haven't hit your goal. Oh, you're so tired, honey. Don't go to the gym today. I know you missed yesterday, but... You've been working very hard. I'm just looking out for you. Okay. You got to cut those fucking people out of your life. Now, I know I've talked about this before, and this is fucking hard because there are going to be some people in your life that you can't just cut out at 100%, but you're going to have to keep them quiet. Or if they keep talking, you're going to have to tune them the fuck out. And you're the one who's going to have to start getting selfish about achieving the goals that you've set out to achieve. You're going to have to make some lifestyle changes. You're going to have to cut some people out of your life who are not in alignment with what you want to achieve. This is extremely fucking hard. But it is Jim Rohn, Jim Rohn, who said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you're spending a ton of time with people who are drinking beer, eating McDonald's, you are going to be the average of those five people. You might have to find some new friends. You're going to have to join some new groups. And then those new groups are going to click together and it's going to accelerate your fucking results to levels you never thought possible. And as you start getting results, you probably start getting into different groups. Maybe you're out on a bicycle group, a mountain bike group, and you get in with some guys and then you start getting in with faster guys. Remember, you never want to be the most fit person out of your group. You never want to be the fastest downhill mountain biker out of your group. You never want to be the best golfer out of your group. You kind of tend to want to be at the back of the pack because if you're at the back of that group, you're learning. You're watching other people succeed at a higher level than you and it's going to raise your game. This works for business. This works in life. This works in relationships. This works. So cut those people out who are not providing value, who are not providing encouragement, or get them on the same page. And if they don't get on the same page and they're not there to support you, then they've got to fucking go. Bottom line. Let's talk about a few of the pitfalls that I have seen that I have been a victim to myself. I've been my own victim to shit like this. Um, Indecisiveness, overthinking. You're going to set this big goal out and then you're going to research every fucking piece of material you can find on it. You're going to watch every video. You're going to read every book. And then what do you know, three, four months have gone by and you haven't even started. You haven't even taken the first fucking step. You're sitting there overthinking every single thing. Yes, 100%, it is important to be prepared. But you can't over-prepare and be efficient with your time. At some point, you just have to jump and pull that fucking ripcord and hope that your parachute opens. 
You have to have faith in the preparation that you have done. And the way that you have faith is by following the footsteps in what other people have done who have also been successful. Because one of the biggest enemies that you're going to have is going to be yourself. Overthinking is one of them. And you're going to have to beat back those negative thoughts that you're telling yourself. You're not ready. You're not prepared. You can't do it. You're going to fail. All of those thoughts are going to fucking hit you on a daily basis, especially when things are not going right. Even when they are going right, you're going to start thinking, wait, why is this happening like this so easy right now? Is this the calm before the storm? Is shit about to go sour? Is everything going to turn around? Am I going to slide backwards? All of those thoughts are going to come into your head. You can't overthink it. At some point, you just have to go. How do you know when you're ready? How do you know when you're ready to go? Is when you've hit these these points. You have the timeline. You have the clear vision of outcome of where you're going. You have a coach. You have somebody there who is watching what you're doing, who has been successful doing what you've done. You've gotten the shit people out of your circle and out of your group. This can be anyone. This can be anyone, your friends, your families. It could be people who live in your own home. You, you're around the right people and you've got the haters out. You're ready. Go. Pitfall number two. People just don't even fucking start. In fact, that's pitfall number one. I put it as number two because it's what I thought of when I was you know, scribbling out these notes. Most people never even get started. They don't even start the preparation. They never go. They're just too afraid to even make a move. Now, why is this? Why, why do people set these goals and, and they don't even fucking get started? It's because they don't really have a reason to hit these goals. Now, I'll tell you what. The person who says, I'm going to lose 25 pounds because I want to look a little bit better for somebody's wedding. I mean, you know. That can be enough motivation. And for people who are strong-willed and stubborn as fuck like I am, if I say I'm going to do that for any reason at all, it's going to happen. Most people, average thinking people, say I'm going to lose 25 pounds and maybe they lose 15 and they're cool with it. Some people aren't even going to fucking start because eh, 25 pounds for a wedding, at the end of the day, they don't really fucking care. They don't really have a big reason why it's going to happen. Let me tell you who does lose 25 pounds. Person who loses 25, 50, 100, 200 pounds is the person who went to the doctor and said, doctor tells him, hey, um, you know, you uh, just had your third heart attack. It, it kind of looks like um, if, if you don't change your diet here, you're probably looking at uh, dying Soon, uh, I would give you another year. All of a sudden, you've got some people who are dropping some fucking weight. Why? Because they have a fucking reason now. They have kids that they want to see grow up. They have kids that they want to attend their wedding. People who are put their back up against the wall have a huge reason to keep going. Some people break down. Some people quit. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because it absolutely helps to have a big reason to achieve what you're trying to achieve, and that's going to help you get started no matter what uphill battle you face. Most people won't ever get started because the reason isn't big enough to start in the first place. It just sounds fucking cool after they've had some cocktails on New Year's Eve to say that this is going to be my goal for the year, and everyone's like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I hope you fucking do it, and then no one ever... Ask them if they've started. No one checks up with them. Hey, how's that goal going, Dan? Hey, Dan, you said you were going to lose 35 pounds. Where are you at? It's January 15th. How many pounds are you down? Oh, you haven't even started yet? Okay, well, let's talk about what you need to do to get started. Those are the people you want in your life. Those people who you're going to just loosely say something on New Year's Eve, and they're going to come back a week later and be like, hey, how's that goal going? Those are the serious fucking people. Keep those people around. Um, Third pitfall, failure. You fail at something once, and then you just quit. You just give up. I see this happen a lot. 
the first time you step on the scale and your weight goes up and you're like, fuck it. I'm going out. I'm I'm getting Cheetos, beer, and fucking ice cream. Fuck this diet shit. I'm in a bad mood. I gained two pounds this week. I'm only down three pounds total in 40 days. This shit isn't working. I'm done. I see so many people give up at, at the first instance of hardship. People these days give up so fucking easy on their goals, on their dreams, on whatever it is. They give up. They just quit. And and they will negotiate themselves into justifying why they're okay with it. They'll think of reasons on why they're okay quitting. Uh, you know what? You gave it a good effort. Well, you tried... And everyone knows as long as you tried your hardest, that's good enough. Fuck no, that's not good enough. No, 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 no. That is, it is not good enough to just try really hard. It, it may be noble. Your friends may pat you on the fucking back. Did you achieve your goal? Did, did you hit your goal? Is the answer yes? Then you did it. Is the answer no? What are you going to do next? Because quitting on the goal isn't the option. Regrouping, recalibrating, and getting back into the fight for whatever goal you have is your only option of, of moving forward. And that's why I've already said it is so important for you to know exactly what your timeline is, a very clear vision, and very specific trackable numbers or markers of where you're at, where you've been, and how much further you have to go. Again, going back to the person who's trying to lose a bunch of weight, they're a fitness competitor, they know every fucking calorie that goes into their diet. They get off course, they gain two pounds. Do you think they give up? No, they look back in their books and they find, okay, I had 1,400 calories here. I had 50 grams of protein. They know exactly when they have their meals, exactly what time of day. Why is this important? It's so that they can make adjustments along the way. So whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, know where your starting point is. Know exactly where you are. Know where the ending point is. Know exactly where you're going. And then track everything that is happening on your journey so you can make an adjustment. You're going to save money this year. You need to know exactly where you're at. You need to know exactly how much money you want to save. And you need to know every single month how much money you're going to put into the bank. You need to know every single week how much money you've spent. You need to know every single day what your budget is going to look like in order for you to save that amount of money that you wanted to save. And if you get off track, it's okay. But you know because you've been tracking where to make the adjustments. And you're going to make adjustments because there is no fail-proof plan. You're going to have to make adjustments You're going to make mistakes. You're going to trip. You're going to fall. You're going to be trying to lose weight and you're going to gain two pounds, but you'll be able to look back and figure out why was it that I gained those two pounds? What, what did I do differently? Oh, I had a tub of ice cream on Saturday when my cheat day only said I could have a half a tub. And then I went out and had sushi the next day. Okay. Well, can't do that anymore. I'll cut it in half here and make an an allowance Sunday. This is the kind of shit that you have to know exactly what you're going to do. Otherwise, you're you're pissing in the wind. If you do not take some of these steps, now these aren't all the steps. This doesn't assure that you're going to be successful, but you're going to get a lot fucking further. And your failures, you're going to learn a lot more from because it's not whether or not if you actually hit the goal, but... It, it does matter that you made progress and that in your failures, you were able to learn 
so that you could move forward and hit that fucking goal. So what? You didn't lose 25 pounds in three months. That was your goal. Did you track everything you did? Do you know exactly where you started and exactly where you ended and exactly where you were going? Good. Now you can make some adjustments to that diet. Now you can make some adjustments to that saving account. Now you can make some adjustments to how much money you're spending on your credit cards and how much you're going to pay off and how many homes you need to sell and what you need to do in order to get a promotion at work because you're going to be following the footsteps of what the other people have already done. You're going to be coached. You're going to have a timeline. You're going to have a clear vision of what you are going to do and you're going to learn from your failures. Ladies and gentlemen, be the warrior that is prepared before they even step on the battlefield. Know your enemy. Know the battle. Know where you've been. Know where you're going. It was Wayne Gretzky who said you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Not taking action will guarantee that you will fail. You're not going to win by being a spectator in the fucking stands watching people on the playing field. You're not going to help your team win the game being an armchair quarterback yelling at the fucking TV on Sunday sitting on your ass. So get clear on what it is you want to get done. Get those people on the same mission as you. Get a coach. Make a timeline. Get prepared to get onto that field. And then get after it. This is the Get Your Ass to Work podcast. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you guys next week.